The rut is just now starting to kick off here in Alabama, Midwest. Stuff's been going on two or three weeks now. Steve McKeehan, the owner of Chapel Hill Plantation, called me the other day. He said, Hightower has showed back up. We lost this deer earlier in the year for about a month, a month and a half, and he has showed back up. It's a night picture, but I'm eager to get out here, check the motor, and see what we got on. Well, needless to say, I'm a little bit fired up about heading to Chapel Hill Plantation. The rut's blasted wide open. I met Steve McKeehan at a show uh, in Rainsville, Alabama. We talked deer hunting, talked about his place, you know, and his accommodations and what he had to offer. We lined up hunt up for the gun season in Alabama. The rut's blasting, like I said, so next thing to do is get there, get our clothes on, get with Steve, shoot the gun, and get in the woods. Goodness gracious. That's who we after. Brownies loaded up. We got Moultrie's out. High Tower and Junior have been located. We finna get after him, son. All right, we can set up. And there's already some nannies walking out there. We got several pictures of two shooters in particular. Right here, one being high tower, big 10. Other being junior, big mainframe eight. There is no wind at all. So if we can pass the test with all these other deer, we may get a shot. It's prime time. We got about an hour of light left. Hopefully one of the headlisters will show up. The field is bare, barren. There is nothing out there right now, but uh, it's kind of warm. Pre-rut, on the verge of busting wide open. It could get hot and heavy here shortly. We hoping anyway. After no luck the first afternoon, I'm very anxious to get up the next morning. Hunt a set we had been talking about, you know, Steve and I have been conversing back and forth, you know, he's been talking about the pond, how many pictures we have of High Tower and Junior there, that natural funnel, the wind's perfect, so I'm eager to sit the stand and see what happens. First morning in Bama, most people, when you think of big bucks, you think of the Midwest, the West, but not of this, we in the deep south. Chapel Hill Plantation. We got a, a couple hit listers have been spotted. Motor surveillance is out. We in the hardwoods right now. We got green fields in front of us. These deer filtering back to bed along these ridges. There is a swamp right here, so they're kind of funneled down. That's why they put this shooting box here, but it's not too cold. Which is what I like. I don't like the cold stuff. We got several pictures of the deer we're after right here, so we're going to give it a shot anyhow. That's okay, though. We'll get some bill. beautiful morning here in South Alabama. You know, we're seeing a few small bucks, nothing, you know, no shooters just yet, but uh, the morning passes, you know, and I, uh, I hear something walking behind us. So I stand up, turn around, and guess who it is? Well, as I'm looking down, I notice this is our shooter. This is Hightower, and he's standing right up under the box. So, you know, there's no way I can get the rifle, you know, at that extreme angle out the window to shoot the deer. So, Basically, all we can do is watch him. You know, he, he wheels around a few times, kind of. It's like he's cutting our track. You know, 
kind of skirted around the box right there. But instead of taking the path that he's on and walking out in front of us, he turns around, goes out the way he came in. The Moultries told us to hunt here, so we hunted here. And it was gut-wrenching. We had the deer come right in on us. He just come in behind us and walked right up under the shooting box, which is so rare, but there's a funnel runs next to this beaver pond right here. And we're sitting so close to the edge of it, these deer walk right up under the shooting box. He was standing five feet in front of us and it just, you can't, I couldn't shoot him. But we've been getting several pictures and video of this deer. And he's been hitting a water oak up the way about 400 yards, been coming there pretty much every evening. We got pictures of him, video of him. We gonna sit there this afternoon. That X boat, he better not come too close. Well, after that close encounter with Hightower that morning, we, we go out, we check some cameras, you know, head back to camp and try to make a game plan for that afternoon. And as you can see right there, he's tearing it up. In the daylight, gosh. A deer like it in the daylight? We're going to sit in there amongst him this afternoon. Hopefully he'll come to that oak this afternoon. <laughs> he'll be there. But we head back in with a plan. You know, these deer have been hitting this water oak relentlessly every night. You know, we have picture and video, picture and video, you know, of our shooters and different deer hitting this hitting this oak tree. You know, they're dropping heavy this time of year and uh, they're just wearing them out. You know, it's a great attractor. Basically, our only option is the old school, build a ground blind, get the wind right, and hunt it that afternoon, see what happens. You know, we're about 50 yards off of the, off of the water oak, so we just have the chances. Our shooters are there, so we need to hunt it. We're on the edge of a sawbrier thicket. We got a motor camera out there in front of us, but I ain't there for no reason. That's a water oak right there, and them deer have been tearing it up. We got a picture of both our hit listers right there. So we went old school. We're gonna sit on the ground. 10, 12 acre field right here. I don't know exactly where they're coming from, but I know where they ended up. South Alabama. Chapel Hill Plantation. Tweaky is a deer we're very familiar with. He was initially on, you know, the list to be taken out. You know, he's one of the deer we were after. But uh, two weeks prior, Steve called me and said Tweaky has broken his his G2 on his left side, which is split. He's a beautiful deer, don't get me wrong, but I think we're going to let Tweaky slide. We got two deer that aren't broken up, that are hit, hitting this water up pretty heavily, so we're going to stick it out and see if we can't get one of those shooters. Well, as we're watching Tweaky, you know, in the woods and behind him, you know, hoping one of our shooters will come out, you know, I noticed something to the left, you know, I hear something rustling in the leaves and something catches my eye. Turn, turns out it's just a small eight point, but you know, he kind of circles around and uh, squares off with Tweaky, you know, and that's pretty much all we saw that afternoon. Lights fading. They here, we got pictures of them. So we're gonna keep after him. And we're gonna connect. It's just a matter of time. All right, we're in the same stand we was in yesterday morning. High tower, 
Walked right in front of us yesterday morning, looted us. Couldn't get no shot at him. Might all get the caution tape out because it could get ugly right here. It's kind of overcast. It's struggling to get daylight. We haven't seen a deer, you know, since we were able to see. And Steve nudges me on the arm and says, hey, here's a deer coming from the left. So I grab my binoculars and immediately notice it's our shooter and he's heading right for us. High tower is closing the distance on a beeline right to us. yesterday we didn't think we was gonna get him and right at first light <laughs> and we look up here he goes and we took the girl's son around an x boat two seconds and he is laying right there barely up <laughs> right in front of the Moultrie camera oh my gosh oh my goodness <laughs> what? what a buck Look at what a 10 pointer, 11 pointer I should say. Goodness gracious. Well this is 110% a Moultrie deer. The Moultries don't lie and it killed this deer for us. A couple days ago Steve called me, said high tower showed back up. He disappeared late October. Moultrie's got him hitting these oak trees and cruising this ridge right here around this beaver pond. We hunted here yesterday morning. He gave us a slip. This morning it turned out to be fatal. We hunted the same stand. Wind was right. He was the first deer to show up right at light and died in front of that Moultrie camera right there. Chapel Hill Plantation, it don't get no better. We had an absolute ball at Chapel Hill Plantation. I mean, uh, just a great hunt, and I can't thank Steve and Ross McKeehan enough for inviting us down and treating us to such a good time. If you're looking for the hunt of a lifetime or the deer of a lifetime, you need to call Steve McKeehan at Chapel Hill Plantation and set you up a hunt with him. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. The accommodations are phenomenal. The terrain, I mean, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place. And the hardwooded, you know, uh, hardwoods, rolling hills, pine thickets, uh, just, you know, deer habitat. And uh, had an absolute ball. 
and a hunt that I will soon forget. Thank you so much, Steve.